Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the LJL officially unofficial cast. I am still your host, Alex, otherwise known as Lexi Master One. Of course, I am joined by Alex Hapgood and Sam Hapgood, the Hapgood brothers, initialize and Nymera. Please, as I say always, introduce yourselves. Yeah, we're like knockoff Mario Brothers. We're not, Ita we're not Italian. We're not plumbers. We don't particularly jump on people. Actually, I'm quite sedentary. Most I look of pretty the time. good in red. I've got that going for me. I oh, I'm not. Green isn't really my color. I feel like there it's is not a creative color. That's for certain. You um, could have gone for so many like British brothers of history, and yet you're like, oh, nah, we're knockoff Mario Brothers. I didn't like, choose this one. This is where we ended up. I'm like, so. uh... I like how he. I like how he assumes he's player one Mario. I like how he assumes that. I mean, yeah. he's the older brother. He's the older Mar brother, so like, Mar at least narratively, this is the way it is. Yeah. Yeah. True. Also, so, also, Alex, you're taller, so you are by default Luigi. In oh this yeah, whole I am spot. technically Luigi. Okay, okay. Like, you didn't, you did you have to, That's what you had to do. You had to do me like that. Like, you, you, you walked into it, mate. You're like, ha ha ha. He assumes he's player no, like, one. I, 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 I jumped, I jumped into it. Let's be real. This is Mario. There's none of this oh, walking business. God. So, you know what else we're jumping into? Burning Corvus. Yeah, that's better. Well, that was a good segue. Well done. We're we're here. We got that. We got there. And this is definitely going to be a very s interesting matchup now. So we've got Burning Court hot off of their game versus the Fukuoka Softbank Hawks Gaming versus mm -hmm. Sengoku, who, who are a team I'm still not sure where to put in yeah. the table. I had very high expectations coming in, but those expectations haven't quite been met. And now I'm, I'm more confused where to put them. I'm putting them maybe around V3. But even V3 yeah. is still confu a, a slight question mark in my head, so... I think I think on their day, they're top two, three. If, if they get a good draft, they play correctly around yeah, their wing conditions. Yeah, that's very fair. Um, and particularly in this matchup, I think that, like, Apperman has got his chance to really strut his stuff and show that he's going to be a player to watch in these games to come. And, I, and I've seen... I've not seen any other team in the league kind of both really win extremely hard in draft and at the, their next game yeah, kind of in, yeah. <laughs> in draft at the same time like they do have this habit of sort of draft themselves like either excellent or awful there's just never a middling draft like i remember that their, their game where they had a, a kale split push with a leblanc on the sideline they were splitting with ap split push who didn't build lich vein and then just got caught and lost to make multiple team fights in a row and lost the game in six minutes um and now with some of these more though. bottom teams now starting to show up and really start performing, we saw Axis obviously have a slight upset and actually get their first win on the table. Again, congratulations to them. Yeah. Burning Core as well. Just beat SoftBank, who in all of our eyes coming into this week were top oh, they look three, they look top hot. two. And now something was a bit wrong with them. So now we're in a very interesting place in the league at the moment where only DFM are standing tall currently with one last game to go for them still against so uh, Sengoku but for this game Burning Core versus Sengoku my lane to watch is you've kind of already hinted at it at initialize was Apperman and it's going to be Ray Farki for Burning Dude, Core I said it too. oh you said it as well yeah it was me oh Praise Nymera me well well done Nymera you're very smart that's why you're the color commentator well done good boy good boy <laughs> So we have Apperman versus yeah. Ray Farkey. That's where I'm going to watch. That's where I'm excited. Yeah, I'll, I'll watch, yeah. Both the top laners for the bo both Sengoku and yeah. Burning Core. And this is definitely going to be where I think the game is decided personally. Yeah, I think do we see a Darius ban? Do Or do they just let it through and let Burning Core sort of like kind of put I, themselves into that I mean, hole in the draft again. It would be such an arrogant play to let it through if you're going to try and play a 1v1 as oh, Ackerman, I think. It would be, it would be, I want it for the drama. <laughs> I want it I want it for the anime storyline. I'm not going to lie. Oh, 100%. But like, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure Ackerman has like a ridiculous champion pool which kind of if it has like, everything in he's it, played but... the yorick what what do you think's next on the list do we get the zach top we... plane you, a, you Apple man like, might in, be in... might just be like you can have the darius i'll play lucian and kill you four times in a row oh i actually feel like lucian's really bad into darius really? in a lot of ways. if you ever get hooked then see you've just got the dash use... i don't think he ever can hook you uh it depends if you have flash but look there are way anyway we will only talk about that if it actually comes up in draft can, can you sure tell where i always... where i really want check out our podcast episode two of the ljl unofficial podcast so you can find out my full thoughts on why lucian should be played thank yeah, you that's 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 plugged in before yeah no i think um it'd be really cool to see a couple of interesting <laughs> picks come out and i think these are the teams to pull out some random 
crap if we're going to. Uh, particularly in the top lane. Although that's not to say that the other parts of the map are um, completely forfeit. I think that Yutori Miyashi has been a very consistent carry. Yes, he has. For Sengoku. He's been playing MF a lot. He's been affecting team fights a lot. He's um, been picked off occasionally in team fights by some very strong mid laners, the likes of um, Ramane in their week one game. Yes, he week one game. Yeah, I think so. um, yeah, um, when when Ramani was playing his godlike LeBlanc performance, but yeah, he he's you told me actually has had some very good games so far. And that's gonna be our lane to watch. But with that in mind, I think it's about time for me to do the countdown as we always do at, over in the unofficial because it's a blast from the past. In three, two, one. Good luck to both of these teams. All right, we are into champ select, and once again, Burning Core over on the blue side with Ray Farky, Want, Rocky, Yuhi, and Proud. And for the first time today, we have Sengoku Gaming. We have Apperman in the top lane, Blank in the jungle, Pyrian in the mid lane, Yutori Miyashi in bot lane, and NT as support. Syndra and Rek'Sai taken off the board by Burning Core, and Akali is uh, the current ban from. Sengoku Gaming, but they banned the Elise as well, not wanting yeah. to give that over to Wants, who definitely plays that champion pretty Yeah, so well. Blank has really prioritised the Rek'Sai, and it's actually the Orianna Bland banned out. This is a champion I really wanted to see more from the LJL, so, you know, just preempting that our burning core, now set at 2 and 3, will uh, be able to overtake uh, Sengoku if they win this game. But the Sengoku would have a chance, two chances, to get towards that three wins in that column there. The set banned out as their last choice. Yeah, and it's an unsurprising Aphelios first pick for Burning Core. Uni played that pretty well. Uh, yeah. At least in the team fight, struggled a little bit more in lane. We've kind of been over that. But of course, the Rumble is very much a flex pick for Sengoku Gaming. That has left come through the draft. And we do know that NT, down in the support role, has been more than willing to pick that up. And Lee Blank Sin. picks up Lee Sin, a champion he is more than comfortable on. He's very comfortable on it, has a large match history on the Blind Monk. And yeah, we've seen that Sengoku are willing to play Rumble in the support role. I'm pretty sure it can be flexed between their solo lanes as well. So Burning Core now have to draft with that in mind in terms of they want to try and counter pick something. On red side, these flex picks do become very, very effective. Proud had a pretty good game on the Braum last time. Made yeah, the MF feel a little bit toothless in those team yeah. fights. Prevented a lot of damage coming through from uh, the already kind of limited damage from an RE2. So we'll see what else they're going to pick up. Flexing a Yasuo here would be highly entertaining, <laughs> but probably unlikely. Uh, I think you can't pick Yasuo on its own. I think this is likely to be just the hover. I think you'd have to pick that with a Gragas, really, if you're going to be... Uh, That's a bit more that sensible. Uh, this ha So Rocky has played the Victor before, hovering it, but it is the LeBlanc locked in. It is played that well last game as well. He did, and it is a pretty good matchup into the Rumble, should that go mid lane as well. So maybe trying to force Sengoku's hand and say, hey, you can't play this in the mid lane, so we know it's going elsewhere. Yeah. Orn looking like a response here. The Carpets of Doom are definitely layering up right now. We've got the Orn Horn and, of course, the uh, Equalizer. I was going to call yeah. it the Executioner. That would be a cool <laughs> name, too, but it's not that. Yeah, we don't have uh, Darth Vader's Superstar Destroyer yeah, in this cool. game. So what this is is opting in to say that Orn will be uh, potentially denied by the Braum. Uh, Braum being one of the... You know, the old school, I mean, as much as Orn isn't necessarily one of the older champions, but definitely one of the original Orn checks slash counters, being able to shield off the Orn horn. And uh, yeah, Sengoku banning out the Darius. Uh, we, we were wondering about that in pregame. <laughs> and it's the Thresh in return banned well, out by Burning We, we were talking about uh, players that can walk the draft. Of course, it's not a phase one ban with that kind of higher priority. But in fact, the Ray Farky does kind of elucidate or uh, lead to rather a kind of a, a Darius ban is it's pretty strong and the Aatrox taken off the board as well another one of those pretty high priority top laners uh, yeah. uh, let's see what the last ban is here probably another support if they take away the Thresh could be the Nautilus could be um, or could also be the MF yeah it yeah, is the MF yeah. Uh, that's kind of the, the other S tier AD carry that the LGL teams have been going towards less so about the Senna but you know there is the Ezreal available if they want to pick it and you know what that would be That'll be another, another carpet. carpet. Yeah, another carpet with the Ezreal Ultimate, the True Shot Barrage coming in. Ash being Ash the pick actually here. being the one to pick up though. So what this is is a little bit more direct engage. Just chuck the arrow out, see if you can catch someone. And then if the ultimate lands from um, the Rumble, it's very very strong. And actually, this is the lane 
that uh, we saw. I think this is the lane we saw last time with. Oh no, it might have been the Senna with the support rumble. But we have yes, seen. Was Senna uh, so in the LCK, we saw Ash rumble. I think that's when we saw that. I can it see the combo lane. that you stun someone, you layer the equalizer down on top, and suddenly everybody takes damage. Jarvan locked in for once. Uh, Proud doing his usual hover of the uh, the Yumi. Unlikely to be picked up because Braum's already in the game. Uh, as we've been saying, though, it is kind of his usual hover. It's just, you know, maybe just realize cats. Maybe he does. Maybe, 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 cool. maybe he's the one person who saw cats in cinema. Uh, that, I mean, there were a few people who did, but, like, the reviews were not not great for that movie. I haven't I haven't done myself the, the displeasure of watching it yet, but it's kind of on the list of things <laughs> to torture myself with at some point. Um, the GP currently has been taken for Ray Farkas, yeah. but uh, NT is thinking about a bar or a Blitzcrank. Malzai gone back this way. I'm reckoning probably a rumble support, but the flex pick is still available until the lock in. See what they go. They it's do the go for the Malzai. So, this you is did the uh, about yeah. Malzaha being picked over in yeah. the LGL. This is this is the the first Malzaha pick of the LGL. It's actually pretty good versus LeBlanc as well. LeBlanc obviously tries to survive quite a lot with her mobility post level six, but then if there is anyone available uh on Malzaha's team around him when he does use the uh the the ultimate available to him. Uh, you can definitely kill off that LeBlanc pretty easily. Yes, of course, and of course, with the malefic visions, and of course, his silence, it's always a very powerful tool. Yeah. Not very many of those left in the game uh, silences. silences. So we'll, we'll be forcing the QSS tax. Um, and yeah, of course, probably. that's another point, point, well, not quite. Of course, Ash Arrow isn't point and click. But it's another point of very hard CC with the suppression from that ultimate. Yeah, and what it means is that actually if the Ash Arrow lands, you can just kind of walk up and Malzahar ult them as well. Yeah. And then if you do Ash Arrow into Malzahar ult, and then there's an equalizer around as well available, um, person's dead, dude. Like, yeah, they're, they're, they're dead. dead. Yeah. They're so dead. Um, so yeah, I quite like Sengoku's comp coming out of this. There's a lot of clear options they have available to them, a lot of playmaking tools. Uh, and Blank obviously returning to the Lee Sin. I think that's his second or third game on this champion. Uh, looked pretty decent on... Uh, the other games which he's played, but uh, did have a, a couple of near throws on the champion as well in the mid game. So looking for Definitely some did. clean mid game decision making from Blank. But of course, on the other side, Burning Core coming into this with their first win under their belt. Rocky back on the LeBlanc, looked very comfortable on that in the last game. And Ray Farky picking up his uh, very dangerous gangplank that he almost took down DFM with in week one. So close. He was putting close, up yeah. some fairly significant damage numbers. Uh, I'm very happy to see him back on that pick. And of course, uh, Gangplank with uh, his Cannon Barrage does match up very well with the Cataclysm. But then again, there are a lot of area effect ultimates that are pretty happy to have a Cataclysm yeah. to centre their targets in. Yeah. Uh, I think that the Gangplank will be very helpful when you're trying to solo out. I think particularly LeBlanc has a lot of options this game for diving forward and poking the Malzahar, at, the Malzahar, the Rumble, and the Ash. And when you chuck down a GP ult as well, that can just add the extra tick of damage, which can take down that person on Sengaku. Yes, and we're looking at a, uh, no, not quite a delayed invade, once walks forward, spots blank, decides that's uh, too much work, and the retreat pings come out, and he goes forward, potentially debating, finding an early wall into the red buff, but can't yep. pull it off, and instead it will be a standard fan going on here. Yeah, standard fan, once putting down the ward in the river brush on top side, recall and getting a sweeper, that typical kind of almost exploit on using the reduced cooldown of the sweeper after you've put down your level one ward. So yeah, uh, once just getting a little bit of vision out there as well. And one thing actually which we're going to have to look forward to in this game is that uh, we'll have Jarvan into a Felios into Cannon Barrage as well. So there is a significant amount of Wombo onto Burning Core from quite some range as well. So both teams having a lot of tools to play with into these team fights. Yeah, and it is the OG anime skin down the bot lane for that rumble, oh, running wow. the uh, Super Galaxy rumble. Super Galactic Face Melter. Yeah, always someone starts talking about spirals and we all start yeah. having some PTSD references to our childhoods. But here we go. Looking at like a little bit of pressure oh, early on for poke. the Ash. But that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. Easy, so, easy, I mean, easy standard trade. So the thing side. about trying to poke out Felios is that he does start the game with the Severum, which gives him that sustain in early lane. Yes, Even with the Electro Harpoon into the volley trades, um, Rocky, uh, sorry, not Rocky, Yuhi being able to sustain his way through that poke pretty efficiently. Yeah. Uh, looking at the runes there, nothing super surprising. It's double grasp in the top lane gangplank running towards that rim a little bit tanky. It hasn't gone towards um, 
what else could Gangplank run? He used to be able to run Klepto, but of course yeah. he doesn't run that anymore. So I suppose Grasp at this point probably being yeah, his best is, pick it's, anyway. Yeah. It's, it's the only rune you really want to take on Gangplank. No, he's Glacial Gangplank. Uh, so, with, um, that would be just awful, but um, I'm, I'm can, ready. Can, yes, can I return with a no? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, can you don't? Can you? No, no, can that would be a no. Yeah. Um, I guess the only rune which could have been taken differently, I think Perian could have taken Spellbook yep. on the Malzahar. Could have also taken the Comet as well. Good trade Ooh, by good, Yeah, it's a nice early Arcadon. trade from this. Oh, good barrels. Yeah, but the barrels, yeah, the barrels do though. trade things around. And of course, Gangplank has burned through his charges on his pop. Does, in fact, of course, have oranges, which make things largely K. Okay. Um, it's ironic, though, because they provide vitamin C and not potassium. Yeah, no, potassium. no, no potassium. Yeah, yeah if it needs to be bananas, they want bananas, to be K. Bananas, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's like, like yeah. right. What are you doing? Maybe guys? they see Come like. Maybe what, they see what kind like, of game uh, design is this? Banana Kingdom. Um, banana Kingdom. Banana yeah. Kingdom Gangplank. Or order of, or is it like Order of a Banana? Like Order, 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 oh, order yeah, of Banana Gangplank. This is it. He is a secret agent. Him and Soraka are like working together to yeah. we were infiltrate about, the world of fruit. Yeah, last game. Bananas. Last of the game, we were talking about illicit business dealings with a uh, mafia with skin ma line yeah, uh, exactly. Gragas, who is a completely upstanding member of society. society no, no, all but of this is slander. It's, 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 it's gangplank that you got to be worried about. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the man literally engages in scrimshaw. You know, like, the dude like carves bones for fun. Like that's While people are alive. The dude's a psycho. Uh, yeah, it goes pretty nasty. Um, uh, you see Blank just coming in, just making sure that the middle wave can get pushed in. So Pyrian, who's out of mana, can back. Probably get himself something like a Dark Seal and a little bit of extra HP, uh, AP rather. Does get himself the Boots instead. The Dark Seal obviously picked up alongside the Corrupting Ooh, Potion. Though. Big damage early on onto this LeBlanc. Uh, there was some good poke and then uh, the Q used to cancel the recall as Pyrian had teleported back in. Both mid laners taking teleport will have four of those this game alongside uh, the global ultimate of the Cannon Barrage and the uh, Enchanted Crystalline Arrow as well. So a lot of map plays to be made by both teams. So... Uh... What's your read on how these teams want to play this game? Where are our win conditions? Who should we be looking to to carry? And who should we be looking to to get carried? So I kind of sound like a broken record, particularly in this week um, of eight games as well. But effectively, if you turn up the objective first and you kind of secure your vision, secure your territory, you are just so powerful at that point. Right, well, Rubble you... Equalizer is a yeah. notoriously great... Uh... Team fight, dragon fight, uh, ultimate, right? Yeah, and, and also, like, the Ornol is really good on that regard as well. There's some good Electro Harpoons landing onto Yuhi, though. He's been uh, poked out pretty significantly here in the bot lane. A couple of levels into uh, the volley also making their mark onto a Felios, too. But, yeah, so if you manage, to, if you have to walk through a choke point, you have to walk into an Equalizer, you have to walk into Call of the Forge God, or on the other side, you have to walk into Jarvan threatening a Cataclysm and the Cannon Barrage and the Moonlight Vigil as well. You're going to be very happy to uh, win that team fight off of those cooldowns. Blank just running into once here in That's the lower jungle. Vision. Thank you. Like the flag and drag has been used, so Blank has got a cooldown advantage for now. Going to try and steal some of this stuff. Does take the big chicken. Uh, and that's a decent advantage from that little fight, but Jarvan otherwise has a, yep. a six CS lead, and of course that's jungle CS, so means a little bit more. But Blank is just continuing to be an utter annoyance in this jungle. Yeah, he gets himself the bargain bucket of uh, the big, the, the big chicken there. Uh, once clearing out the ward though, and actually early wards are pretty okay in terms of getting yourself some XP as well. Gets two of them for yeah, his value. That's, there on one. that's, that's, that's a high value. value sweeper. Yeah, absolutely. And especially for this bot wave, or bot lane rather, that does want to be shoving out or has been shoving out pretty hard. That could be a, a risk for them. Of course, they are blessed by the fact they do have a Hulk shot uh, in Ash's kit, which does offer a fair amount of safety when it is yeah. up. But currently, once is unspotted. Proud's going forward, Goodbye. uses the stand behind me, but is flashed away from yeah. by Enti. But once is still around, going to see whether these guys from Sengoku Gaming continue to push up or not. Yeah, so uh, support Rumble, pretty squishy. You do put level into your W just for your heat management, but you don't tend to max, you definitely don't max it first. And Ooh, that's a heal now from you. He has a lot of damage, but Blank is here too. It'll be a 3v3, but that's a lot of damage back onto Enti, who got stunned. Yeah, did use the ignite as well, using the flash earlier, and the heal went down. So it's actually a flash and a uh, ignite, tr uh, a flash and ignite, and a heal trade for just the heal of Yuhi on the Ophelia. So definitely going the way of Burning Core, even though the lane pressure is pretty on the side of Sengoku. Yeah, maybe they would have been better off waiting for alt sixes to hit them when they could really do some damage well, with their equalizer. But... I think that um, actually I've been quite impressed by um, Blank's pathing. I think he was down there at the perfect time. It's the mini game of blow up the barrel goes the way of Ray Farky this last time, actually. It's always a bit of a frustration when you are this melee top laner versus the gangplank barrels, but just using this ultimate to clear out the wave. the wave, yeah. 
Would have been nice to hit that onto the Gangplank as well. Indeed. Extra, uh, extra damage there. But Affleman probably just looking for a recall here, I guess. Actually, he um, built himself up the Bramble Vest against uh, the Gangplank. It does mean that he can't get so many free trades as, uh, as he used to do. It's actually a pretty significant CS lead for this Orn as well. Uh, yeah. As Sengoku Gaming start up this Mountain Drake. Yeah, for sure. And I think that Orn is a champion that you can use on a side lane to dive... Um, a gangplank later into the game, particularly against Elise Sin as well. Elise Sin, one of the better champions at dealing with um, the gangplank because you obviously you can't cleanse, you can't orange out of the kick. You can, I think, actually you can orange flash in the same way that you can do a QSS flash, but that does require a lot of cooldowns to be available to you, and uh, a lot of the damage still obviously comes through. QSS first buy from Rocky just decides, you know what? Oh, wow, I'm is, gonna yeah. get this task, uh, this this uh, tax out of the way straight away. QSS bought, but that means that this LeBlanc is not going to be hitting her damage spikes for a little while. Yeah, and actually Perian, the, the, I think the thing that he's been best at in the LGL so far is um, his his wave control and his wave management good, has, yes. has been pretty good on the whole. And he's been very competent at dealing with side lanes and Malzahar with kind of the auto push ability. You can you can dump your, your E, your Q, and then your W, get those three voidlings out to just push a wave. It can actually push a cannon wave very, very quickly. It's one of the reasons why playing against Malzahar is so annoying. There's actually no good time to reset against a Malzahar because he can push out a cannon wave so quickly. Yeah, while that once did take the rift scuttle there the rift, uh, rift, yeah. uh, rift heralds herald. herald. i've been doing that i called it like the it's like a combination between uh, yeah. the scuttle crab and the, the rift herald do you have but, a preferred name for the herald by the way like the first and the second one is it shell do you, is it do you shelly go by and shelly? shelly i, I think I'm, shelly. I'm fine with that i like i, I don't presume to rename uh people other people's pet uh, other people's pets that feels like a really you know poor Wait, taste i mean uh, keeping a wild beast such as the rift herald as a pet seems pretty barbaric i mean it's like yeah, Good Herald of the Barons, dangerous, dangerous creature. Yeah. Uh, certainly has a disrespect for civilization and structures. Um, Towers are made, you know, buildings are made and stuff. Jinx isn't in this game, buddy. Yeah. Why, like, no need to quote that. But I'm sure her and the Rift will get along surprisingly well. Actually, that could be quite a good friendship. I, I could definitely I could see, see, like, that. Like, I could see like, like a web novel series between like Jinx, yeah, Kristana, I mean, really and, and the Rift Herald. I mean, like, there's also an element right of um, like. Could you imagine the Rift Herald as Jinx's pet? Like you walk in expecting a dog, and it's like, no, there's just this massive, like, I mean, uh, eldritch beast just sat there. Somehow that seems very in keeping for Jinx. It does. Yeah. Uh, but level sixes have ticked uh, ticked over in this bot side. So aware of that Ash Arrow coming through and the Equalizer, of course, being. Uh, we've seen a QSS uh, very early, and they have to be. I think that, there has to be a misclick. That's you've the got to hurt. Yeah, and that means the ult can be used. But once this down here has ult himself, uh, trying to see if they can catch up. But so they is might Blank. Go this play. He might try yeah. and base something out. And actually, so is Pyrian roaming yeah. down on that uh, jetpack fueled hextech. I don't know quite how he's floating in that skin. It's kind of a weird magic, thing. magic, magic, hextech, hextech, magic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, glad we sorted that up. That yeah. was great. Thank you. So, so uh, I, think I was that, so confused. Yeah, Sengoku... You, you re revealed uh, yeah. this. Yeah. This game so far, they have all of their engage alts available to them. Blank really hovering around, trying to make sure that uh, he's around whenever the fight starts. I think he's been doing a pretty good job of putting himself in position for possible counter ganks. The bot lane doing pretty well, got themselves up to a 10 CS lead. Probably going to go down to about a 5 if they pick up all the CS under tower. Whereas on the top side, it's actually going out to a 20 CS lead for Appermen, doing very well in the 1v1 versus the Gangplank. But of course, Gangplank happy to scale up into the mid and late game as well. Next big play for Burning Core, probably going to be around where this Rift Herald gets yeah. put. Uh, it's going to be a bit tricky though because they've not actually got any waves that are yeah, pushing okay. anyway. So this Rift Herald is going to be difficult There's to use unless they can though. form something. Yeah, Apple Man having the Searing Charge always taking a fair amount of damage. That's true damage, of course, from the passive and the cannon barrage. Oh, he misses, misses the ult. Apple Man is in so much trouble. Oh dear. Oh, Apple Man. He'd been pushing up the whole game. Has a chance maybe there to try and kill off Ray Farky. Does have the flash available to him. I think that it's a mistake to flash there. I think you if you use your ult, sure, by all means. Maybe even use it to clear the wave because the, the Herald is coming. I think that um, Ray Farky played that pretty well as well, baiting that in. At least Perian manages to get a good push into the mid lane, getting two turrets for himself already. Uh, two turret yeah. plates for himself. If it was two turrets, it would be uh, pretty incredible. Tried to hit a really hard right angle there on the Orn Horn, and it was just Yeah. Um, so what we see here is that he gets hit by the first barrel. Does uh, and get, Actually, Ray Farky missing out. Uh, he does dodge out on the last 
of the barrel. Bellows Breath as well ignores that. Oh, Misses too late. the ult just about. Rocky is already here. Doesn't have too much damage, but it doesn't matter when they're sat there at 400 HP or so at this point in the game. Uh, he's now picked up the Lost Chapter for his Warriors. Does have a bit of CDR and a little bit more AP as well because he hadn't actually built any up until this point. Yeah, it was a good roam from the LeBlanc. It was nice play by Ray Farkey to get Appenman into that position. It was. A pretty poor call of the Forge God second activation there, though, which uh, left... Oh, Harold actually put into the space. mid lane. Yeah, they've gone with it there. I'm not sure about that one, but of course, Pyrian is backing right now, and so currently... Here as well. So they don't have a Cannon Barrage. They do have TP available to um, the GP. It's TP also coming in from the mid lane for the Malzahar. He's actually gone for the Ludens. It does give you a bit more wave clear, a little bit more burst, and obviously more AP as well. You don't necessarily need the GLP when uh, you can start going Rhyalize later into the game. But that item completion has come through. Uh, and a second rate in the here now. Oh. Started, but that's going to be a lot of That's a great e kick. Oh, no. Kick, kick away from the, oh, the Kicked away from the equalizer. That's not good. And now NT is so damn low. It's going to be able to escape. And uh, Blank at least to pick up the dragon. But that was some serious anti synergy there. Uh, yeah. So Appermen comes down for that fight as well. Doesn't have the Call of Forge God available to him, which means that another plate's going to go the way of Ray Farkey in this top lane, who's managing to pick up a little bit of extra CS as well. So, yeah, a little bit of anti synergy, as you're saying. NT putting down the ult. Whereas Blank was trying to kick the Jarvan back into the team, does at least secure the second Drake of the game for them. And actually, Ray Farkey yeah. picking up two extra plays. Four Huge. plays now down, now down for this top lane out yeah. of turret. And that swings the gold lead actually in favor of Burning Core. As the rift goes, good morning, Summoner's Rift. <laughs> it is hot out here in the jungle. Damn hot. It's an infernal rift. <laughs> and we're looking forward <laughs> to seeing a lot more damage come out of these drakes. Oh, I love you, dude. That's uh, that's great. Uh, uh, yeah, so, uh, so <laughs> we see, obviously, the infernal rift come out. Two drakes to the name of Sangoku's team already. We'll be looking to try and secure that... Uh, uh, that soul, the Infernal Soul, being very nice this game as well, because they do have a lot of poke available to them. I can imagine if they get the insert Infernal Soul onto the Electro Harpunes, the um, Volleys from the Ash, and of course the Malefic Visions coming out of the uh, Malzahar as well. A lot of damage to come through from that team composition. Uh, and suddenly this Orn is not winning the damage trades in the way he used to up in that top side. Uh, he's kind of waiting on a Sunfire completion when maybe he can hold his own a little bit again but that gangplank is backed and with all that turret plate gold he's acquired along with his passive with the silver serpent and stuff has picked up a trinity force at 14 minutes and feeling pretty content second yeah, rift herald now started for Sengoku gaming there yeah entities up here does have the all on the on the rumble the only flash not available to them is the orn but he's on the bot side of the map and that's probably why Sengoku are trying to drag this out the pit and try and Stop this from becoming, from becoming a full-blown fight. Yuhi not here yet either, though. That's the spell shield now burnt off Sengoku Gaming. And they're going to go for it. That's a decent equalizer. Oh, the back and good. Blank destroys the Jarvan. But that's a decent turnaround now. Ray Farkey gets a kill onto Pyrian on this Melzar. And that Ethereal Chains will land on the Rumble Sticker. Oh, that's good a fantastic old. Ornhorn who's roamed up from the bot side. And now Rocky is in so much trouble. And it's actually trying to trying desperately to get as much damage as he can. And Rocky's in that backside. Uh, flat distorting away, and that's going to be a two for one overall. Oh, so a fantastic Malzahar ult to stop once from even using the equalizer. Great reactions from Perian to shut down once on that team fighting jungler. I do think actually the I'm trying to remember who the Herald went over to. No it one's was, actually but picked I it think up. Oh, Sengoku did pick, did get it. I don't did know if they it, picked I'm it not up. I'm actually sure if they, they picked, picked it, up. it up. Right, that's a good question. Is that I have the Herald still on the floor? Let's have a look so when we, we come see out here. here. The knockup from the EQ comes through, but the immediate return on the Malzahar ult. The Malefic Vision starts spreading, but it's ah, a good Gravitum ult. It it's was. a good Cannon Barrage as well, which means that there's a great amount of damage to come through here. Affermen turns up to the fight late, but does have uh, no shield to worry about from the Braum afterwards and has a good impact on this team fight. Lots of damage coming through from multiple protocols. Yeah, no one picked no it one up picks at the end of the that. House. But Yutori actually just has to flash away from a full mana bar and two level up on this LeBlanc. Yeah, I actually wonder if Sengoku realized they'd picked up the Herald. I dare they just didn't. I think they were, I'm not sure what they had the health bars. Well, maybe they still probably did, didn't they? Uh, that's just not good. Well, you know? they, they, I think that because the ults had gone down from the side of Burning Core, then... They, yeah, they should, they should have gone and also, that, the like, mobility of Lee Sin does yeah, mean they that you can Yeah, they should have absolutely got that. Now that I think they that's just didn't realize uh, they had it up. That's an oversight there, I have to think. Uh, but either way, no Herald actually taken means that the game is going to be slowed down a little bit. Uh, as Rocky probably be able to push in this top lane. 
Yeah, looking to get the first turret here. Just about cuts it. Yep, there you go. First turret flood over to Burning Core, who are now up to about a 2,000 gold lead. They are, or but I do one think... one and a half, rather. Yeah, they, they are, but I do think that Sengoku are pretty happy with this place in the game. As we said, they do have the two dragons, and they have a very good team fighting composition. We saw that uh, Hyrian had a very Im important ult in that fight, which means that if you do try and engage onto um the malzahar in vision good chance that you're going to get stopped in place the malzahar ult actually does stop dashes it's another thing very much we we're talking about that with the lissandra ult the other day but it does apply to the malzahar, malzahar as well so if you eq in or you distort in then you can get stopped in place and uh, cut down where you stand uh and let's also note that it's an essence reaver first buy from this ash yeah it's, it, yeah so it's the cooldown reduction it's not the blade of the ring king it does give you the crit value as well so ash doesn't crit in traditional ways what it means is that if you hit someone affected by the slows from your w or your uh, autos it means that you do a flat extra amount of damage to them and the more crit that you build so it does mean that you still scale very well with critical strike exactly it's like you're not quite hyperscaling but you're like Extra scaling is what we'll call it. Oh, I think Ash does a lot of damage. Yeah, no, absolutely, game. she definitely does, and especially with her ranges focus and a hurricane, like there's a lot of area effect damage she can throw out. Um, but Infernal Drake is live, and that would be the third Drake of the game for Sengoku Gaming if they can claim it. But they have to get there at the same time. Apperman now having a bit of a one v one with Ray Farky in this river. But uh, turret put down for this Aphelios, but it's shut down pretty swiftly. Yeah, there is a and flash it's... available from Malzahar. Look, here. incoming Jarvan, who's managed to get onto two carries there. Yutomi actually has gone. Well, he's just dead. Oh, actually, Ash is dead. But Blank is also dead. The equalizer is not fantastic, and suddenly it's a two for none for Burning Core. Uh, and I have to feel like Pyrian might have been able to stop the Jarvan as he was going in there. Or Rocky as well. It doesn't matter either way, though. Ash is dead, and the Lee Sin is dead. And that probably means that this uh, dragon will go the way of Burning Core. Although yep. health bars are pretty low on the side of Burning Core as well. They are starting it up. They might just push mid lane though, it looks like Sengoku. Yeah, they're going to try and do that uh, QSS for this Aphelios as well in that fight. And it didn't yep. matter as well, either way because uh, Jarvan got in there, got on top of the Ash, you had no flash, and uh, got blown up. Let's have a look okay, at the replay. So there's a lot happens. of posturing around here. The spell shield from Pyrian is knocked down by the turret. Once actually ulting straight onto both carries from Sengoku, it's a good cataclysm there. And then LeBlanc follows up for the finalizing kill there. I'm pretty sure there actually that Malzar, if he stood still to ult, would have been cut down by Yuhi. So probably a bit of a difficult fight for them. Just caught out of place. And Burning Core with a good initiation in that mid lane, which nets them the Infernal Dragon. And once again, Ray Farky on this gangplank is off to the races with 202, 284, a couple long swords, probably going towards an Essence Reaver with that, I would assume. Or at least a Coalfield's Warhammer. Uh, it could also be towards a Star as well. Oh, that's point, true. But, um, could be towards that. That's a, a it, worthy it thought. It, it, it will be the Essence Reaver as he picks up the F Sword and the uh, Coalfields, but, uh, you know. I'm like just a Sabbath, man. Like, yeah, I, I know yeah. these things. It, it, it sh I think it's good to go towards that as well. You do want the cooldown on the Cannon Barrage uh, to be able to twin up with the uh, Cataclysm combo. We saw that there. Did a lot of damage to you, sorry, man. Actually, really no way to escape that. And this LeBlanc, which went for the QSS first, has now got a Ludens complete alongside those Sork Pent boots. So very ready to cause oh, some blank, damage now. Blank being spotted out in the river here. And he's going to get caught out there. Does no have no flash, but uh, it's just going to walk away from the flag and drag combo. But yes, does lose does. control of uh, the river again. No pink ward kept. Yeah, and the scary thing now is that Rafe Arky is actually probably going to be uncontested for most of this game now. I don't see how... Because uh, GP obviously has the oranges as well, works very well as the Malzahar. It is a free QSS, just on your abilities, no need to play, pay the tax there. Does mean that Rafe Arky has good lane assignments for the entirety of the game. So what this means is that Sengoku really needs to try and force on these dragons. Try and force a win condition away from the Gangplank into these team fights, which they've built towards, and hopefully come out with a win for them. Yeah, it'll definitely be... Worth seeing how these team fights go out. Of course, Sengoku Gaming do have some pretty good synergies between the Orn Horn and the Equalizer and the Ash Arrow, and the, but they need to be able to put them all together at once, right? Like we've seen a couple pretty suspect Equalizers, uh, and, and like or at least the synergies between yeah. people being a bit off with kicks kind of going the wrong way to Equalizers and Equalizers not matching up with Ash Arrows. Like a lot of this stuff not quite matching up at the minute. Yeah, and I think that one of the reasons Sengoku are kind of stalling a bit here is that the counter-engage from Burning Core is pretty good on our team composition. Yes. 
You've got the Glacial Torfeja from Braum. You've got um, the Aphelios ulti if he has Gravitum as well. It means that you can kind of keep Sengoku at arm's length if they do try and follow up on their long-range engage. Obviously, they have a lot of damage with uh, the Equalizer and the Ornhorn coming through. And, of course, you know, some of the Malzahar damage coming through from a bit longer range as well. Not necessarily if you stand there and try and uh, use the ultimate. Perry might get caught yeah, out here, though. Yeah, he has got a spell shield, though, so just about okay for now. But now comes the Cataclysm, yeah, and he's, he's stuck in here. He's got a suppression, but he just gets blown up by Rocky, who roams up with a distort, and that's the end of this Malzahar. Yeah, it's a lapse in vision from Sengoku. Get picked off with uh, the flash invested from the Lamonkey. That's probably going to be a top lane turret as well. So Burning Core playing around these side lanes very well so far. I think this is the way that they can definitely steamroll themselves to a win because they do have these winning side lanes right now. And once the Rocky are, are teaming up very well these last pair, these last couple games, and that's 1-1-4, uh, uh, and four. that's full put kill participation for this Jarvan, and it's 2-0-3, so full kill participation for this LeBlanc as well, involved in everything so far for this team. Yeah, so far, and actually on the other side, it's, uh, it's, it's, ooh, it's just the Gravitum ult goes down onto Yutori Miyashi, maybe just trying to threaten and engage there, as once was on that side of the map, and they had teleports available to them, but they just choose to, uh, seed the turret and try and reset. There is a dragon in a minute, might want a couple of those cooldowns available for that point instead, not use the teleport so proactively at this point. Yep, uh, looking around, of course, we've got a couple important item completions. So Essence Reaver is through for the gangplank. We've got Essence Reaver and BF Sword That's alongside the big Access for Avelios. Um, we're looking at the Hurricane complete for Ash, so she's more than team fight ready at this point. Yeah. Rylai is through for the Malzahar if he cannot get jumped on by a Java Gataclysm, which I think yeah. was an old um, school counter into Malzahar anyway. Well, I think it's an old school counter onto any um, mid lane mage, with, yeah. with, without, a, without a dash in their kit. Obviously, it doesn't work against LeBlanc, one of our big picks in the LGL right now. Very good blind pick. Um, as we see that, Sengoku actually arrived to this objective first. We did say that um, arriving to the objective is important in these team compositions. You don't want to funnel in against these teams. Uh, but Burning Core do have more tools around to grant themselves, you know, vision, have a bit of mobility as well. They can face check with the Brawn, face check with the Jarvan. Um, maybe the Jarvan dies if he face checks the Malzahar. And, and Blank's going to fail onto once, but once is pretty tanky and, and he's going to side with a bad well. idea. Like, yeah, he is. He's got a fair amount of farm, but Rocky's going on to Pyrian. Does get stunned though, and the Ornhorn is here. That's oh, a good wow. Elkalizer as well. Has to QSS, but they does have the QSS. Oh, oh big barrel! What was that barrel chain? Absolutely deletes the backline of Sengoku Gaming. And Pyrian and Yutori Miyashi desperately trying to stay alive, and they are the only ones available. Oh, and Sengoku try and turn their fates around a little bit with the investing of the Malzahar ult, but actually the QSS was still available from Rocky, and they put themselves so far out of position that Ray Farky comes in with just a boatload of damage. At least Sengoku will be able to pick up this Infernal Drake as Perrion heads down towards it, maybe get themselves a win condition in, in the form of the Infernal Soul if they manage to win another Infernal fight. But this is going from bad to worse for the team of Sengoku. It is, and Ray Farky is unbelievably strong. Just goes back, picks up another half okay. an item. And let's have a look at this fight So we see time. Blank kind of hop over the wall, see if he can get anything done onto ones. Doesn't really manage to do anything. Yutori Miyashi waiting in the winds for the Ash. Uh, the ult comes down from Orn, blocked by the shield of... Um, Brom. Of Brom. But basically, just like, the, the, the ultimate is cancelled from Pyrian there, I think, actually. So the QSS was used onto the Ash ult, and then it was cancelled by... Uh, um, the Cataclysm, which pushed it, it just displaced him very slightly, I think, I, if I'm reading that rightly. Then Ray Farky comes in with huge damage, as we were saying, and it nets them a Baron after that play. And LeBlanc now has a Death Cap, which is a huge pickup. Never mind taxes if you have so much money you can buy all the items you want anyway. Yeah, well, there are only two things uh, certain in life. There's death and de uh, there's death caps and taxes. Yeah, death caps and QSS yeah. taxes. That's yeah, exactly it. That would make for quite a good. Like, can we do like a, like a, like a, like a, like a, like an emo rock album for Riot, which is called like, uh, death, death cap and taxes. Uh, de oh, de 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 death cap for Corky. Yeah, yeah, death. Well, yeah, death cap and QSS taxes. Yeah, death cap. Just death cap for Corky would be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. That'd be yeah, pretty. I'm up for that. Hit me up, right? Uh, like like Chogath Eat World. It's, it's a great little yeah. band. <laughs> so actually, we see once um, being really far ahead of Blank now. He's two levels ahead. Yes, Briefly he was three levels ahead as well. So he's probably more like two and a half levels in terms of the overall XP. 
And Sengoku now, I think they're falling so far behind in damage now that uh, LeBlanc is threatening off the back line so massively. And that's comes out. And here we go, but that's another oh. block on that because of the Braum being a thing. And oh, Blank the gets deleted. Down. The Cataclysm's back through. The TP is here, but it's into a catacly into a cannon barrage, rather. Uh, Rocky's, and Rocky's looking. look at that damage just from a distortion. And look at the Gravitimal oh. just silenced away from that tower. Rooted, rather, away from that tower. Uh, silence is a Malzahar's thing, and all he's been is quiet this game. Yeah, silence is a man. This is is a man's best friend, apparently. Uh, Yuhi actually just getting good damage out of that grab some all. It, 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 the root coming through after you uh, use that ultimate and hit people with the the passive ability, which slows people and applies the mark them. It's actually pretty good, and this is going to be an inhibitor down. Oh, Pyrian nearly gets blown up 100 to Uses zero the there. Ult, trading that for the QSS actually for uh on on rocky who is once again deathless on this leblanc having two fantastic games on the leader of the, the mysterious black rose in the mid lane uh, indeed and ray farky's gangplank is just a treat to watch let's look okay, at this one so more time yes look at this one more time so you told me how she commits the ult but the on ult comes down once more while the unbreakable is up from the brawn is blocked the equalizer is not doing particularly large amounts of damage uh, at this point it's only rank one not not even level 11 for NC at this point in the game, while his mid laner is level 15, as is Rocky, who goes in, gets a good amount of damage, and then you he uh, gets that um, root down there. And you see the amount of damage which comes down when you press Q after hitting that ultimate. And Burning Core just in absolute control of this map, in control of this game. And yeah, Yutomarashi has items, but he just can't get anywhere, like, um, to put any of that damage down. And like, all items are coming through. But I think it's going to be a little too late because this Gangplank has completed a Sterex Gage. Has a crit cloak in to be putting him up towards that. That must be 75% crit at this point? No, uh, 50%. It, no, no. So it's, yeah. So you get 25% from the Essence Review. You get another 20% from uh, the Agile Scope. Scope. So that'll be 45%. Yeah. So not either of the numbers yeah. I gave you. Sure. Um, <laughs> but that's a fairly significant goal lead now of 10%. Thousand yeah. gold, which okay. is huge. It is, and actually, one of the other things is that Sengoku don't have a plethora of items for Orn to upgrade. In fact, the only one available is the Black Cleaver to the Obsidian Cleaver on Blank. There's no Infinity Edge built up for Yutori Miyashi yet, which he is going towards as his next item. But that's just going to be so, so far away when you're at this point in the game and you're getting uh, all these waves rammed down your throat. Uh, Rocky just in the side lane here, so very strong. Looks like he's even heading towards the Void Staff as that third item. Yeah, I mean, there is an Infernal Soul up for grabs for Sengoku Gaming in about mm, 45 seconds. But they have to actually be able to get there and contest it and not lose the game as a result of the fight that yeah. will surely ensue. In, into. Yeah, and Pyrian on the Malta High is feeling very anemic right now. He is at level 16, so it has the very low cooldown on the ultimate, but hasn't built up the Leandries yet, which is where a lot of your damage comes through. Black as... just takes half his HP bar yeah. in crescendum damage. Well, it's two and a half items, including the two AD crit items from Yuhi on the Aphelios. So, yeah, it does a lot of damage, and then when you have that Calibrum crescendum combo... That's it is... a decent Ooh. equalizer, and actually the QSS isn't that good this time. Rookie's actually He's going down. down! Finally, but that's a good Cataclysm in returning. Yuhi's still free firing. NT goes down, and this Gangplank is available, but look at the Orn Horn of the background. Is it going to get blocked? No. Ooh. But look at the damage from once you get to three-man knockup! But look at Yutori Mashi trying his very hardest to put oh, out Ray as Fark much damage. Here. He's trying. He's here, Yutori? but he's going to die. Yutori Miyashi has all the damage he needs. Apperman has all the damage he needs, but Gravitum... Severum is it enough? Look at the damage onto this Orn who's trying desperately to stay alive. He's going to go down oh, as well. And Ray Barkey is a monster triple kill in the back of that fight. And the reason the fight looks so close is the Gangplank wasn't there at the start of it. it does cost Rocky his life as he did use the QSS earlier. But Ray Farkey comes in with that massive amount of crit. Six, zero, and five after the end of that play. Oh. And this could even be the That's end. That's another here. equalizer up. And maybe they can get onto this Gangplank who takes oh, all takes the damage. The tower and it saves the game. It looks like he didn't have oranges up for that as well. And that actually does, you're right, save the game. It's a 10k gold lead over to the side of Burning Core. Who are rushing for this Infernal Drake. But actually with once just dead here and Blank respawning, I guess without Yutori Miyashi, they can't force the issue and try and get Are they there running the for the Baron or are they going to try and get here? I we'll think see. they have to try and run for the soul here. Because Can they get here? It's going down thing. pretty fast. It is going down fast, but will Jarvan be able to, will I, Lee Sin be able to get here in time? It's not, it's going to get it. They've got it. That's fine. They've stopped the Infernal Soul take. 
they have just about, and that does mean that now Burning Call up to their second dragon at the end of that. No soul available to the side of Sengoku here. And um, okay, let's watch over this fight again. Going super slow mo. Rocky oh. hit by the Ash Arrow, and then QSS is immediately altered by the Malzahar. The ult comes down. Um, yeah, the damage goes down. The ultimate of the equalizer goes down as well. You saw me actually free firing onto once this with the stone play active on the job, which is a lot of damage soak. A three man knock up later for once there, but Ray Farky comes in with a, uh, well, an attempted three barrel combo, doesn't actually hit anyone with it, but looks very flashy, kills so many people on the backside while Yusori Miyashi is trying to even out the fight and kill off y uh, Yuhi, doesn't manage to do it though, and Ray Farky walks forward, cuts down the ash, and uh, yeah, very, very close to ending the game off that fight. Yeah, and uh, Gangplank couldn't buy anything despite how many kills he picked up, which tells me that's going to be a very <laughs> expensive last item, Infinity Edge, which will be... Uh, yeah, quite to, a lot. Yeah, wants to keep the last, last item. He'll yeah. probably keep the slot open for a control ward if he can. Well, it will. It, I mean, it's not last item in the grand scheme of things, but the game will probably be over by yeah, the time that uh, Infinity Edge is put through. But See, does... you saved me by rephrasing what I said. Thank sure, you, man. Cool. This is why you're and, my um, You know, oh, I was completely wrong about the one upgrade. Oh, wait. There was, uh, uh, there's actually, a, obviously, you can, you can upgrade the Luna's Echo. Yeah. I didn't now, want to call you out on that, but I feel yeah, like I didn't no, I, I Sometimes I just have that kind of brain fart thing. You know what I was talking about in the pregame about, like, being a league boomer and then just, like, my mental capacity get off sometimes. my lawn yeah get, get off my rift uh, yeah but, uh yeah but uh yeah and then also the infinity edge coming through from the ash which is the really big upgrade really yeah, we saw is. how much damage you told him actually was attempting to do in that last fight found a lot of space for himself and props to him we did praise you Tori Miyashi before this game but in this game he is quite far behind and being really taken to town by Yuhi and Rocky in these team fights as well Rocky found himself three items plus the QSS plus the stopwatch as well so it has a lot more defensive Watch tools on to... once as he goes in here only finds Pyrian but it's a fair amount of damage onto this Malzahar has got a sign sign it's a good equalizer on the back line but Yuhi just deletes Pyrian NT now half HP and there's just not enough damage that's a decent Ornhorn and and the uh, actually upper man misses the flipping second. I think actually the, the I think I think I think the shit. No, we're, no, I'm pretty sure the shield came through from Brawl there to block it. No, it came through. He just missed his oh. R2 again. Oh no. Okay, in that case, yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, oh. yeah, I'm pretty sure there was someone in the way with the shield there. But we'll watch on the replay. I, 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 I don't want to flame him unnecessarily, dude. Until I've seen okay. the video evidence. Okay. Hopefully, we'll get a replay of that. Like, look at Ray Farky and Rocky in this side wave. They're looking to try and catch people out. It's uh, a LeBlanc in behind, but on low HP, could get punished. Blank has to be very careful not to get blown up because that's a level 18 gangplank. So he's are... measly 13. So Rocky is actually really high. He's really in a high level, but really low HP. He's going to look to try and one-shot NC, maybe. Uh, oh, Blank just takes hit. his entire like HP bar practically in one equalizer barrel combo. Down. That's a e decent equalizer on top of the Glacial Fissure, but it doesn't matter because Rocky is here throwing the much damage he can. That's a kick back from... A blank, but look at the oh, cannon barrage getting that the massive slows and forcing the hot side of Sengoku Gaming away from this Baron pit as the towers are falling by their nexus. Yeah, they are falling, but it is being wave cleared for now. And actually, uh, Malzah are one of the better champions at killing super minions, so it won't be. It does have the teleport available to him too, and he's choosing to use it now. They have the ash ult. It is it's going, going in. in, and it's only on to Browd, who throws up the door, and that Baron is now secured. And the engage comes from once, gets a good cataclysm, and that's another oh, that's a huge and grab. And that hole is going to be the end of the game. This team fight is a wipe. Burning call coming. You told me actually is silenced by this gangplank. And look at this. It is a five for none. And this is GG to Burning Call, who played this game so well. And turning on a dime, Yuhi going 5 0 and 10 this game on the Aphelios. The huge ultimate, the Moonlight Vision visual coming down to root up the entire team, which then turns into a one shot. Burning Call going 2 0 in week three. And as the Nexus falls on our screens, we're going to bring it back to Mass Swan to round out this third game of the week uh, of the day for us. How did you find that one? Ray Farky is back, baby. He took to week two off. He wanted to say, Darius, I still love you, but he's back. He's back in action. He's He made a statement here. He was like, hello, I'm here. I want to win. And it was beautiful watching this man that was my mvp for week one he was all of yeah, our mvps for week one in that top yeah. lane and what a performance by him yuhi obviously had an incredible affiliates i don't think 
like th those graviton ults that he was performing whether it was for zoning reasons or just because oh i can just get a five man ult at the end or four man yeah. <laughs> ult at the end because because screw you i want to yeah. do it like oh i mean well done to, burning just core just, just to put this in Much context better. so this was a 35 minute game sengoku got five kills the entire game you know, it was 19 to 5 at the end of it. We mm. had Ray Falky going 8, 1, and 7. Rocky going 5, 1, and 5. And Yuhi going 5, 0, and 10. Even though Sengoku drafted oodles of engage, oodles of pick, they couldn't never, find they couldn't no. find anything. And I think a lot of that is because Proud is very good at keeping Aphromen in check. Yep. And I think that once was really taking them to town on the front line. He was engaging and being super tanky on this Jarvan. And even with the QSS tax, like we saw very, very early QSS. Yeah, first time yeah. Probably, uh, <laughs> From both the LeBlanc and the Athelis, of course, Gangplank with his oranges kind of has ways out yeah. of some of this CC. Um, but, like, it was a QSS first item from LeBlanc, no less. And it was, still ended yeah. up putting up massive amounts of damage in that game. Yes, absolutely. Very scary on that LeBlanc. It just shows you the scaling that that champion does have to benefit mm -hmm. her. But with that all said, commiserations to Sengoku. They did play rather well, but they've got another chance to get a win and to put themselves to three and three. But it's not going to be an easy game. After this no, break, we will be seeing Detonation Focus Me face off against Sengoku Gaming. Find out what happens right after the break. Thank you so much for watching.